Hello, my friends and new friends. Welcome to my country farmhouse. I'm Marne, and today I would like to take you into my Tilda's world. So um, a lot of you out there have asked me about my Tilda's, even my clients that come to my sewing room. Um, so today I would like to show you how I build a Tilda girl and tell you a little bit about my Tilda girls because my Tilda girls are not um, made by Tilda fabrics. <laughs> I love Tilda fabrics, don't get me wrong, but when I uh, printed off the pattern for this uh, quilt, it is called Hometown Hen House Quilt. I found this pattern when I went to Lancaster, PA to a quilt show. I knew a little bit about Tilda fabrics, but I didn't know any that they had these awesome patterns. So when I first saw this pattern at the Lancaster Quilt Show, um, there was a uh, there was a stand that was set up um, that was selling fabric, and she had had this pattern, and I thought it was for sale, and I was like, I want that, you know. But she's like, it's a free pattern on tildasworld.com. So when I got home, I uh, got on the site and I printed this off on my printer. And it is quite a few pages and um, it takes you pretty well through detail of how to build the Tilda Girls. Um, I'm not the follow directions kind of girl, you know. So um, I, let's see, it's on page six. I am very visual. So on page six, they have the layout of the girl and all of the pieces that you need to cut. So I'm going to try to break this down for you because I'm a little spoiled when it comes to piecing because I love the Lori Holt books and that's how I started out on piecing. So um, these directions I thought were a little mishmash because they didn't really separate the the background fabrics, the dresses, the face, the hands, the chicken. So I kind of broke down the sizes and the letters into various groups so that I could cut out the pieces and pick out what I wanted for my Tilda girls. So I told you that my Tilda girls are not the traditional um, Tilda fabrics. I love the Tilda fabrics and I love the design of this quilt, but on the picture, I love the girls and I love the patterns that they picked out, but the chicken houses, I didn't even recognize them as chicken houses. So I see things in a whole different way. I'm like the crazy headed <laughs> creative kind of girl that I like to paint my own picture and I love their picture, but I don't want to be cookie cutter. So what I saw when I saw these girls, I saw prairie dresses and what I really love about these girls is their hair. <laughs> and I love that their little braids are kind of like Pippi Longstocking. And if you don't know who Pippi Longstocking is, you should look it up. I'm a little bit old fashioned. Uh, I had a fourth grade teacher that read us all the Pippi Longstocking books and I just loved it. I love I loved Pippi Longstocking, but that's what the Tilda girls kind of reminded me of. So I saw mine in a whole different light. So when I started, when I saw my dresses, I knew that I wanted to make them in some kind of a prairie print because I am I'm old fashioned and I like the old fashioned look. So um I took fa fabrics that I had, some that I bought. I think I bought this one and this one at the Lancaster Quilt Show, but other ones I had anything with a small print on it, I wanted to put into my dresses. And I also wanted my sleeves to be a coordinating sleeve that would match my dresses. Hello, me love. <laughs> We're like mad scientists when we're in, you're in your shop you and I'm to? in my sewing room. Well, I'm talking about my Tildas today. The Tildas? Everybody wants to know about the Tildas. I never knew what a Tilda was until the other well, day. Well, I didn't, I knew Tilda fabric, but I didn't know about the Tilda girls until I found them. And I'm like, oh, I love them. And Tildasworld.com, where they have the patterns, they have a lot of different patterns. This was just one that I picked. So you might want to check that out and um, see which one you like. But I'm going to show them today on how I picked. How I put together a Tilda girl and um, cool. I picked out different backgrounds these backgrounds on my Tilda girls I got that fabric in a bundle it was a fat quarter bundle at the Lancaster quilt show and when I picked up that bundle I knew exactly what I was gonna do with it, it was gonna be background fabric so I threw those in for the background fabric that happens to her a lot she picks up fabric and she knows exactly what she's gonna some do with I it. don't some and by I don't. and by that I mean she picks up fabric and says 
ooh, this is pretty. I'm going to take this home. Because sometimes I don't always know what to do with fabric. I, I, I pick up what draws me. If I don't know what I'm going to do with it, something will come to mind. So How much fabric do you got? A lot. How much is a lot? Well, I'll take a look around. I have scraps. We've got I one, have... two, three, four, five shelves, two closets, and a couple of boxes and totes full of fabric. I've got fabric stashed in secret places. Hey, you wait, all are wait, sellers. Wait. How much whoa. fabric do you guys have? You know, all right. I mean, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Are you hiding is... fabric from me? Are, are you? Is that well, your addiction? Well, when I have my sister Glenda in here, you know, there's some. I tell her she can pick off anything off my shelves most of the time, but there's other stuff that I keep that's my special stash that I don't want nobody to touch. Wait, 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 and I'm not wait, 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 wait. So, are you telling me that you have fabric hidden from me? I don't know. You probably don't know where it is because there's some down here in the cubby. There's some up in the cupboard. I mean, I mean that's that's, that's, what, that's what addicts here. do. Well, That's what addicts do. You know, I have my favorite stuff, Jim. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm heading back out to the shop. All Let's right. just come up and say hi. Okay. I'm. Bye bye. <laughs> so back to the girls here. Um, the chickens. The chickens on my blocks. Um, the chickens on the pattern are polka dotted, and I don't know if you can see that. I really liked the idea that the chickens were polka dot because I. I'm a polka dot kind of girl. I love polka dots. And I love the chickens because I have chickens and I'm a chicken owner and it just, I don't know, it just makes me think of old fashioned. So anyway, I want all my girls to be individual. And I picked all of their dresses, their coordinating sleeves, and even their boots. I tried to make in different fabrics and I, and I might have gotten a, maybe a pair of them the same. I'm not sure, but I'll get to that. So I, I wanted to have different kinds of, of boots of course the different backgrounds which i think it makes it look really um i don't know that vintagey kind of look and the faces i don't want to put anything on the faces i know in the i don't know if in the book in the directions they tell you how to put eyes or mouth or anything i want my faces to be to be faceless kind of like the amish kind of dolls so you can picture their expressions you know i just i like the simpleness of this quilt the hair color the hair colors there is nine Tilda girls and I want my hair color to all be different because as women, we are all different and we have different hair colors. Some of us are blonde. Some of us are redheads. Some of us have dark hair, brown hair, gray hair. There is women of all colors, all hair types, you know, sorry girls. Some of you out there are into the pink hair, purple hair, blue hair. I am not that kind of girl. I like the natural or natural dyed. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to get on to tell you how I put together these um, girls. I have four left, and I will go over um, some of the dresses and sleeves that I have here. So I have some more hair color here. This is more like a light brown. And my next dress is going to be this purple plaid, and then I have the sleeve. And I've got these all pieces that are ready. The hair pieces, I already cut them out, so I could... I made a small stack here. Actually, I might as well just show you my stack. And then you can kind of see what I did. And then I'll I'll get down and I will cut up my background pieces. So I'm going to take it down here on my table. I kind of have everything laid out. And I have a stack here. So as you can see, this will be my next Tilda. She'll have a plaid dress. Oops, I'm poking myself. And her coordinating sleeve. And then, of course, her hair color to make all of the, the color of the hair. Um... No, wait a minute. I am backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are the boots. These are brown boots. Her hair is going to be silver. So I've got like some of this gray color here and it's like a gray grunge. I want a silver hair in there because silver hair, brown hair, whatever color hair, as long as it's not colored hair, <laughs> I'm okay with. So um, this is the background color that I picked for that. And it has a little bit of these red and, and like black uh, color print in the background. My next dress is going to have brown boots and the hair is black and it has a little bit of this brown and gray in it. And these are all scraps from my scrap bin. So this is a great way to use up small pieces of scraps, you know, for your girls. And, I, and my boots are scraps as well. So that's for the next girl. And then her dress is going to be like this reddish orange with the striped sleeve. And then I have this background here that has a little bit of like the orangish, I don't know, 
I like these different prints. So there's a lot of differentness going on into these. So these are all the, the dresses, the boots, and the hair. So this one has, where's my hair for this one? Hmm. Anyway, these are the boots for the next dress with the blue here. And on the one here, I had some straight fabric. So I'm going to kind of make her boots maybe not as tall and they have some stripes at the top, like little stockings. I thought that would be really cool. And then her, there's her dress and the background fabric has that light blue in it. And I'm not sure where the hair piece went for that one. I'm not sure it's here in my stack. So here is another boots. Okay, so these two boots will be the same, but I'll probably scatter these out into different places. So there's two pairs of boots with the stripes. I just like the idea of that. The hair color is brown. And actually these are little brown, it's brown fabric with little black pansy flowers in it. But when I make this into the hair, it looks like it's gonna be like brown and black. So I just like the different colors. And then her dress will be this um, slate blue with a red sleeve because you have the little red drop, the little red dots <laughs> in the in the fabric. And then of course the background kind of coordinates with the dress. So hopefully you can see all this as I'm trying to lay these out for you. And then I have some other matching background fabrics that were left out of the fat quarter pile. And I think I'm going to incorporate this maybe in the background of the chicken houses. I haven't really got to a chicken house yet. But the chicken houses didn't look like chicken houses to me because they used tilde fabrics. When I think of a chicken house or a barn, I think of barn board fabric. So my chicken houses are gonna be red barn board. And this is a red barn board fabric, which I think is really cool to make my chicken houses. Um, the roof on my chicken house, I want it to be gray. Um, it, this kind of reminds me of like a metal roof where on the pattern here, you can see that their roof on there is red with the white polka dots and when I first looked at the picture I thought it was some kind of a window with a curtain and I didn't realize there was a chicken in each chicken house so that's going to be really unique but I love polka dots but I didn't like the red and white polka dotted roof so I really want my chicken house to be a little bit more lifelike and in the background windows I'm thinking maybe of putting chicken wire or maybe a this gold yellow with a white background because it reminds me of like hay or straw. So I haven't made up my mind on that, but that will be another video um, to do the, the, the hen houses. So that kind of gives you a sneak peek. And I really need to find one of my hair colors here. And I'm not sure where it is because I've got all this stuff piled and I've moved things around in my room here quite a bit. So it's hard to say where stuff gets scattered. Sometimes I'm a little bit disorganized. But I am going to take you through and show you how to do one of these Tilda Girls. Um, it can be a little complicated. The directions, um, I'm sure there is, let me see how many pages they are to the 16, I think, oops, 17, yeah, there's 17 pages that will print off when you um, get on the Tilda's World. And I I said download, but I'm not, I'm not computer techie, but anyway, I just printed this off and I don't know if I downloaded it and then printed it or if I can just, I think you can print it right from the site, but um, it's 17 pages, so be prepared. And I printed mine in color because I really wanted to see the colors and things and contrast and stuff, but that's a preference choice, so that's up to you. So I told you that I, I lost one of my papers, give me one second, it's fell down here on the floor. Um, I have one piece of paper here and I have all the numbers. Whoops, I cannot hang on to anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I have all the, the pieces for the dress. I had um, put them all together so I know just what sizes to cut for just the dress. Like I said, I have all the dress pieces here, all the boot pieces and all the hair pieces in the sleeve. And I also have all of the chicken pieces cut. I cut all the pieces for the chicken and then I just pinned them together in piles so I could try to keep them um, somewhat organized. And I have all the face pieces and the hand pieces here and I cut them all at the same time as well. So I tried to get everything organized for each dress, sleeve, boots, chicken, the hair, the face and the hands. And then of course, when I get ready to put these together, I just, you know, I cut the background and then I start putting everything together like a puzzle piece. 
So um, yeah, that explains all of that. And then of course, on a separate piece of paper, all the letters, because they've got everything listed together and it's kind of confusing to see what piece is piece. And like I said, I don't follow the directions. I just kind of, I don't know. So, I mean, you can follow the directions. This is just how I did it because my my mind just thinks differently, but I like to get it done. So I, I took all the background pieces and they all have little letters on them. So I just, you know, looked at each letter, coordinated it to the picture of where it went. And then I wrote down every piece. So when I get out my background piece, I can just, you know, say, oh, I need this and this and this and this. And I can just cut them up into order. And then I lay everything out. So that all being said, let's not waste any more time. And we'll get right to a Tilda girl. And which color do I want to make? I don't know why I lost one of my hair pieces. And I'm not sure where it is because I had all these laid out. And I don't want to take up too much time. So let's go with the purple plaid that I showed you that was right on the top. I'm not sure where the hair is for that one. This one goes here. Sorry, I'm a little disorganized. I have two hair pieces here. That's where it went. So I have the black and this is the black and, and uh, gray swirl through here. So this is where my other hair piece is. This one has the silver hair. So I'm going to put this one with that. I didn't lose it. <laughs> okay, I have a lot of things going on in my sewing room and I started making these tildes um, probably two months ago. And then I got distracted when July came because I had to put together two graduation quilts for my nephews who were both graduating this year. So that kind of made me have to take everything and put it away and set it aside. And then when I cleaned my sewing room after I made two quilts, I thought I want to get back to these, but everybody has been asking me about them. So I thought this is a great time to show it to you. Maybe get you started on your own Tilda. So um, I got a background fabric here. Let me see. I'm going to move you over to my cutting table and I'm just kind of going to scoot through um, doing up this uh, background fabric, but I'm going to move this stuff to the side because I'm going to have to press it first. And if this gets too long, I might just fast, have, Jim's going to edit this video, so I might have him fast forward it if it takes too much time because I don't really want you to get bored on what I'm doing. But, um, let's see, my iron should be hot. And, um, I start with the two long pieces first because, um, there is, let me show you real quick, on these girls. You could pretty much, I'm going to try to get you up here so you can see. There is these long pieces on the side on the back of her sleeve. These are the two longest pieces and one will come to right here and the other one will come down and I've had to add a piece in to um, make it long enough because these are fat quarters that I'm working with for my background and they weren't quite long enough. And then you have a big piece here and I'm going to show you how we do this dress. I thought that was a little tricky and this piece here is a little tricky because you have to sew them at these like wedge angles and you, this one here is the same as a wedge, a wedge angle and you sew it from corner to corner and then the pieces up here, the hair, let me tell you about the hair real quick. These hair pieces, um, you these are tiny half square triangles that you put together and then of course they finish at one and a half and then by the time you get them sewed together they finish at about one inch and it seemed like every time I would put this together and my sister Glenda noticed right off when I made my first one that I got the hair wrong because somehow I turned the other side and it I don't know it looked weird so it took me uh, I have to lay it out and make sure when I take it to the sewing machine I don't turn it or anything because it can be tricky of putting some of these little pieces together, but I'll hopefully can get to that for you. So I'm going to get this piece all um, pressed up. And like I said, this is a free pattern on tildesworld.com. And you can refer back to this video if you have trouble putting your girls together, but I am going to try to walk you through it the best I can. Um, you can follow along step by step through the 18 page directions. I just kind of cut through the chase and um, wanted to get a lot of the pieces cut and get them organized so that I save time by having everything cut instead of trying to work at one 
one girl one at a time I tried to get myself picked all my colors and that's something else you might want to consider is picking your colors you know ahead of time for what you want and if you're looking for fabric for you know to make your own Tilda's world kind of girl I would recommend you to my friend Erin at uh, sheetssocreative.com. You can order fabric from her from her site. She has an awesome array of fabric. You really should check it out. If you're local, go to her shop. It, it's well worth the drive. But um, I will try to have Jim put a link to her shop in the description box. So if you wonder sheetssocreative.com, um, you won't regret it. Erin is the most nicest person you could ever meet, and we have become fast and very good friends. We do a lot of things together, and I, uh, she is a small businesswoman, and I want to support her local business to keep her in business because she keeps me in business. So if you have the time, um, please check out her website. So let me take you over to my table and I'm going to show you how I cut up the background pieces and you don't have to look at my crazy hair. So I'm down here at my table and I need my notes. So my background pieces, I'm just going to set that right there. And I want to do the longest pieces first, which is the, um, no, the longest pieces I put on the back. So I need a two and a half by 22 and a half, and then I need a one and a half by 25 and a half. So I am, I've got this folded in half because this is my cutting station. And this is the longest part of my fabric. So I am going to fold it in half. And I am going to line it up on my lines so it's nice and straight. And I'm going to push it over just a little bit so I might trim off just make sure I have a nice straight edge. Make sure it lines up on the bottom here with my line because I do not want a crooked line. I think that's pretty straight. I'm just going to put a weight on there just to kind of hold it down. I don't think I need to trim off very much. <clears throat> okay, so my first cut is a one and a half. So I'm going to do a one and a half inch cut and then I'm going to do a two and a half. So one and a half. Let me make it easier for me to think. <clears throat> Let's take out my one and a half inch strip. There. And then, you know, you heard the old saying, uh, measure twice, cut once or measure twice, cut, and then cut again. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, and I've done it, and I don't want to waste my fabric because I don't have very much of it, so I want to make sure I get it right. So now I'm going to cut a two and a half. And if you have a directional fabric for your background, you're going to want to make sure everything goes the same way. And I know I had um, a tilde on here that have this one on the top and the one on the bottom. Had a little bit of a direction. And I had to really pay attention on how I cut my fabrics because I didn't want one going one way and then another going the other. So I know I'm going to need an extra piece for this, but I'm going to wait and cut up my other pieces because then whatever I have left over, I can just cut off a piece and add it to these. So those are my two longest pieces and they go down the, the back side. So um, some of the other bigger pieces, I need an 8 inch by 13 and a half and then an 8 inch by 3 and a half. So, starting right off, I am going to cut an eight and eight and a half inch piece. And I want to make sure I get this kind of straight. So, eight and a half, or no, not eight and a half, eight inch. Boy, I want to make sure I get the right measurements. Eight inch. So I need an eight inch cut. So I'm just going to do an eight inch cut. <clears throat> Set that one aside. Okay, now I need an eight by 13 and a half. So my edge here is pretty straight. And I'm going to measure down. To the one inch line here on my mat and line up my lines 
and then my 13 and a half falls right here. No, 13, 13 and a half falls in between the 13 and the 14. So the 13 and the 14 on the top of my grid here falls in between the seven and the eight. So I know that's gonna be 13 and a half. So that is the big piece for the dress. And we will get to that because you're gonna sew this at an angle. My next big piece is an eight inch by three and a half. So let me see, this should be eight inches. It's eight inches, yes. And now I'm gonna need a three and a half inch piece. So I'm just gonna line that up there. And I have eight inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I need to cut it three and a half inches wide, eight by three and a half. So my three and a half inch piece by eight. This piece is gonna be the long, the triangle on the bottom of the dress. Now the rest of it is just little pieces and you can see I have just these two pieces left. So I'm going to um, cut up my pieces. So I already know I did the, the two pieces for the dress and I did the two long strips in the back. The rest of them are all small pieces. So I need a four and a half inch square, one, two, three, four and a half. I'm not gonna get it out of that piece. So I'm not gonna get rid of this piece. And and I try to make the most of my fabrics. that again and let's see you see what I mean when I say this this my fabric sometimes moves under here so I have to be very careful because I don't want to get a wonky cut <clears throat> so bring this back down I'll wait on there And this little piece here measures a, a, a well, it's not quite a one and a half, so I might need a one inch piece. So I'm just gonna, I set my small pieces aside because I try to utilize everything if I need that size. So there's my four and a half. So we're just gonna set that up there. That's my A block. Then I need three, two and a half by one and a half. So this piece here, I can cut up to one and a half. And I can go two and a half. Two and a half. I can get three two and a halves out of that. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to cut a one and a half inch strip of each. So one and a half inch strip, and then I need three two and a halves. So we're going to do this. Try to be precise on everything. Okay. So two and a half and two and a half is five and three is seven and a half. So there, I've got three two and a half by one and a half out of that and you can see very little, very little waste. So those are my, my B rectangles. And normally I would um, put an itty bitty on this with your little letters or a pin, but um, I've done, I've done uh, five of these girls now, so I pretty much know where, what goes to what, but you might want to mark your stuff as you're cutting. I have all the little letters beside all my cuts. So if I needed to, I could put a pin in there or put an itty bitty on it and know, or a sticker with ABC or whatever. So you know which, what is what. I need six two-inch squares. So we're gonna make um, two-inch squares out of this piece. Oops. Three, four, five. I 
not much left on that piece but a salvage. And hopefully I can get... Oh, I need six. So I need to cut some more. This isn't going to give me six squares for sure. So it's one, two, actually got four two inch squares so I need two more and these are going to be my C pieces so I need two more two inch squares so I'm just gonna use this up on my mat and it lines up pretty pretty perfectly and just cut the two inch and then I need two more did I say two more squares I cut four yeah so I need two more oh I think my mat's getting a little groovy okay and then we need two more two inch squares four and then there's actually going to be one extra so I'm just going to set that extra one out to the side and now I have my six two inch squares now I need two one and a half inch squares and then of course I'm going to need two one two one and a half squares for the letter D four one and a half squares for the letter F and it'll tell you on your directions um what they're for so let's see i can make some one and a half inch squares on this and let's see six well, let's just do it the easy way one and a half and one and a half is three i don't want to get too cut happy so we'll just do a few at a time because I'm trying to conserve my fabric as I need it. So let's see how many one and a half inch squares I get. I'm not too good at math in my head. Sorry, maybe some of you some of you are. So there's two. and a half six okay so I, I do need six one and a half inch squares two for that for D and four for F so I got one two yeah three four oh I got a couple extra four oh, I got eight squares out of that okay So, got a couple extras in case you make a mistake. So, there's two for the letter D, four for the letter F. So, those we can set aside. Okay, so we have made the I and J for the dress. Now we need three. No, we haven't made. Yes, we did make for the dress. We made for the dress. Okay, and then we need. A three inch by two and a half. And then you're going to need two two inch squares for the letter L. And I already have one there. So that will help. Let me press this a little bit just because um, when I cut stuff, I want everything to be um, nice and flat. I don't like a hump in my fabric because that can make your measurements a little bit off. So I try to get it as flat as I can. A little best press or starch always helps. I'm just trying to walk you through this. So, okay. So we need a three inch by two and a half. So I'm gonna cut this at two and a half. And then I need a three inch piece off from this because I need it to be three by two and a half. And the end is not quite straight, so I'm just gonna cut that tip off. 
And then I think I can get another two and a half out of this for the I need a three inch. Let me check. Three inch by two and a half. So there's my three. So that is my letter K. And my cutter is not wanting to go all the way through. So there's a three by two and a half. And then I need two two inch squares for the letter L. So I've already got one two inch square here. I'm just gonna cut this one down to a two inch. So let's just um, even that off a little bit. Cut this in two. There's a one inch piece. We'll just throw that to the side. I'm gonna cut this one down to two and I'm gonna get all my scrap ones and threads off from it. And it'll probably help if I move this over in a different area. When I cut on this, my where I cut on my lines on my mat all the time, it really um, it makes grooves in my mat after cutting so many times in the same place. So um, it's probably time for me to flip this mat. My, my screw is loose on this. I got so many of these cutters, and then uh, I have a good cutter, and I haven't changed the blade on it yet. <laughs> so anyway. So we got two two inch squares for L, and then we're gonna need a two and a half inch square for M. So let's put those aside. Uh, I need another two and a half inch square. I need a three inch by five and a half, and then a one inch square. Okay, so I think I have a one inch piece right here, and you need this little tiny one inch square, which is gonna be um, right up at the top of the sleeve to kind of square off for the shoulder. So I've got this little piece. I'm just gonna cut off a one inch square out of that. And then we will have that little piece. And this is such a tiny piece, you don't wanna lose it. So I probably don't need the rest of that. So there's my little tiny one inch square. I'm gonna set that aside. And then of course I said I needed a two and a half inch square and then a three by five and a half. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I cut this, um, a three inch strip off this, I will get that five and a half inch uh, rectangle. So I'm going to, um, it's got a little bit of overhang there and we want it three inch. Cut that at three and set that aside. And then you've got this piece. And now I need to cut it down to a five and a half because it needs to be three inches by five and a half. Five and a half. Very little waste. There's my three by five and a half. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I we just need the M square and that's at two and a half inches. So um, I think I'll just cut a two and a half inch strip off this and we will have a little bit of this left, which I will need to cut some of it to put on the ends of my two long pieces because they're not gonna be long enough. So you have to remember I'm using uh, fat, fat quarters for my backgrounds. So if you're using yardage, you know, you won't have to be so frugal. Five and a half. Okay. I love this grid because I can measure it any place on my mat as long as I know the sizes I need and what, what slot I'm sticking it into. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is what I'm used to and it, it makes things very accurate for me. So I'm just gonna trim that piece off and then I need a two and a half, so it's two, three, four, four and a half. I'm just putting my num my Played in the numbers I need to get the correct size that I need. So there I have my two and a half, and that is for my M, M square. So now we've got all of the background squares cut. I'm just going to leave these little pieces here on the side because I've got the two long ones, and we've got all of the background pieces. Um, here, let me get rid of these. We've got all the background pieces cut, and I have all the pieces for the dress ready to go. So let's move you back over here to my little table here and I have all of the little pieces here and we'll start assembling somewhat. So I don't need these long pieces right now so we're going to set these aside. 
these littler pieces are what you're going to work. But right now, what we're going to start with is these two bigger pieces for the dress. Because these have to be sewed in, um, kind of like into a wedge. And it does explain in the directions. And let me see what page that is on. I have to, to look here. I said they have some really nice pictures like how to build the chicken houses and the letters are all on each piece of your your page here which makes it really nice so um what your girls are going to look like and it has all the explanations and where to put your you know so if you ever need something to follow the directions are very well written i just like to follow the pictures <laughs> Okay, so how to put these pieces for the dress are in here. And this is a little tricky, and it's on page 13 of your directions. And this took me a little bit to look at it and kind of like, oh, goodness, you know. <laughs> it was a little crazy. So I've got my dress pieces here. And I have them all cut. Take my pin out. And we don't need my sleeve right now. And these are some smaller pieces. So I'm going to set them aside. I've got strings everywhere. So what we need, here is the smaller rectangle. And this is going to get sewed at um, this crazy angle. And here is the bigger piece for the dress. So this is the piece on the Tilda girl, which I will show you in her dress, how it kind of comes out. You've got this big wedge here. And then the part down here on the bottom is a rectangle that you make another wedge on. So... Um, page 13 explains how to do it, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it as well. So I don't have a right or wrong side of my plaid, although I do have a right or wrong side on my background. So I want my background face up and I am going to just, um, spritz it with a little bit of best press. I like, oops, um, shut it off here. And I'm just going to, whoops, I don't want that. I had it on streaming. I want to mist it. So I just want to mist that a little bit. The best press is nice because it, it's a starch and it, it'll press up your fabrics and it'll make it nice and crisp. And I really want my pieces to be nice and crisp. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to get stretched out or anything. And since this has been folded, let me just, oops, got all these pieces here. I'm going to kind of keep them laid out, but I want to show you. Let me set those aside. And we're gonna focus on these two big rectangles here and they press that out. They'll, these are the same size. And I like to do the big stuff first. So this is the dress. Now on the picture, let's see, they have the dress side up and this was always confusing to me, which it can be confusing to you too. So I'm going to lay this dress part sideways because really what we're going to do is we're angling our two pieces so that one point is going to go here and, the, and this point is going to go down here. So in the picture, they kind of have you angle. No, oh, wait a minute. I'm not doing it right. Here to here, is it? Okay, hmm, is it here? Give me a minute. Here. This corner here, this. This way is up. <laughs> I'm a silly girl. I can't get my brain to um, comprehend what I'm doing. Yes. So it's, it's opposite corners. That's where I'm going wrong. So um, this, and you can see this, this corner needs to be at the top. So the bat, my dress is, is, is vertical. This is kind of horizontal, but you're gonna turn this corner up to the top and this then the opposite corner to the bottom piece of the dress. And I kind of want my corners to line up. And when making the dress, the dress is made up of two half rectangle triangle units in two sizes. For the upper dress piece, make half the rectangle unit and its eye following 
figure O, start print fabric in wrong side of the lighter background fabric, or you can just mark the dots on the background fabric. So they want you to mark dots. So if you can kind of make like a reference point, um, I have, I have a little regular pen here and I can kind of make some reference dots. Whatever helps you. I mean, if you have one of them disappearing ink pens, you can use that too. But I'm just going to put two little dots there so you kind of have a reference point. And what you want to do is um, draw a line to each reference point, which I don't have a ruler right here. I'll have to go over here and grab one and make sure I'm doing this right and showing you right because it is a little complicated. And this is where you're going to need to... Um, Kind of look at your directions on page 13 to do the dress. It's the most complicated part of the dress. So let me let me uh, let me go over here and grab my my quilter select ruler. And let's see where is it? Somebody borrowed it. Oh, it's right here in front of me. It's on my desk. <laughs> I don't know if this. Oh, this one's not long enough. You need a long ruler. So let me get my other ruler that Jim cuts the quilts with. This is very important. Okay. Sorry about that. I wasn't prepared for this piece. I'm thinking, I don't know. Haven't made one in a while. So now you can see I'm going to line this up with my two dots here. And I've got a dot up here, and I've got the dot down here, and I kind of want to line up those dots. And I'm hoping I've got them marked right, and I'm just going to kind of draw a faint line with my pen. You can use a pencil with this. This isn't going to show. I just need a, um, a point of reference, because you don't really want to get this wrong. So now you can see that I have a reference line. Let me just set that over there. I have a reference line from here to here. And it probably would help to pin this to keep this in place. So I've got my pins handy and I'm just gonna kinda, let's see, you're gonna sew it under on this line, underneath the line here. Probably about a quarter of an inch, but let me just read. Okay, so you mark a diagonal line not through the outer corners of the fabric. Now place the fabric right sides together, angling the background to the two sides so the dots match. So yeah. So I'm gonna say an eighth, eighth of an inch away from your line or below it. So, um, no, actually you're gonna sew it on the line. So you're gonna cut the back part off. You're going to sew it on the line and you're going to leave a little bit of, you're going to leave a quarter inch. Jeez, if I get this right, I'm sorry, I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> so you're going to sew it on your line and you're going to cut this top part off. So I'm going to pin where I'm going to cut my, where I'm going to cut off. This. Like I said, I haven't made one of these in a while. When I was making the girls, I kind of was on a roll making them. So it's been a month since I've put one together. So I'm just kind of refreshing my memory <laughs> and trying to make myself think to think, I hope I'm telling you right. And I really don't want to mess up my tilde. So I want to make sure I do it right. So, okay, so I've got this pinned and let me just throw one in on the side too, just to keep everything in place and hope like hell I don't pin my, prick myself with my pins. So let's go over to the Juki and we will um sew this together now i've got stuff everywhere because this this one's going to be the next one so we're going to set that aside and then of course i have all the extra pieces for the chicken and and whatnot so let me just fix this camera a little bit there we go i'd like to be able to see you while i'm trying to show you what i'm doing and I have finger mints here. I don't know about any of you, but I like dark chocolate and I like to have chocolate in my sewing room when I'm doing stuff. I don't know. This feels good. So, um, 
I'm gonna sew this on this line from the reference point of the dots. I take these pins out. Let's just kind of see what we got here. So now when we open this up, it should meet up to the top, which it does. And this is the top part of our dress. So it kind of how it bows out. And I love that it looks like the wind is blowing her dress, you know, and I just think I just love the effect. I love this color plaid because it just looks so, <laughs> so prairie-like, you know, so. All right, let's move back over here and um, show you what I'm doing. Got my directions. So we know that this is gonna fit nicely and I'm gonna kind of press it before I cut it, I think. And move my rulers around so I don't get them in the way. And I'm just going to kind of press it up. And I am going to take my rotary cutter and cut it like a quarter of an inch um, along the line there. So I'm just going to kind of move over here to my cutting area. And don't mind me, I'm going to, I think I might, oh, I don't know, should I use my I probably should use my uh, my lines here. Get this to work. Let's see where am I at? All right. If I want to cut it a quarter of an inch away, I'm going to line this up, and I'm going to do this right because I really shouldn't freestyle this. So I'm going to cut this off, but it's not going to go all the way because it's super tall. So I'm going to kind of have to cheat here a little bit and kind of. Come down and up there. So I have these two wedge pieces left. Um, I will save them even if I don't use them for this quilt. I use them for scrap. So I just kind of put them aside. So now when I open this up, we have the top part of our dress. And like I said, this is a really kind of a tricky thing, but um, I'm sure you'll get it. So let's go back over here and we're going to do another... Um, another wedge rectangle for the bottom of the dress. And let me just press this up one more time since now that I cut it. And we'll just set this aside. And I will get you on to the next piece. So now we're going to do the next rectangle, which is the shorter one. And that is on page 14, it's the next page. And hopefully I show you right from the pictures because I'm a visual kind of girl. So I have the dress part. Get these little threads off there. Okay, and it says to lay it horizontal. And then this, I'm gonna paste it down pretty to pretty. And I want this corner up at the top or just below the corner. And then this one, no, this one, die. Get it right, Marnay. This one here, and I think I want it just above the corner. And then this one, this one just like an eighth of an inch above this bottom corner. You can see the eight, an eighth of an inch. So it's not exactly corner to corner here. And this one at the top, I want it about an eighth of an inch between the two points at the corner, if that makes any sense. Um, when you have the directions here, it will tell you. Um, it's a little tricky, but I've got the other ones, so that I think they look good anyway. So. <laughs> okay, so um, my ruler. So now I want to draw a line. Well, we want to get that dot. So where do I want this? They want you to draw an eighth of a um, 
square around this. But I'm just going to eyeball it to where I think it needs to go. So I'm thinking corner to corner with my um, corner to corner on the, the dress, but not the background. So my, my dress corner is here and my dress corner is up here on this one. So I think it gives you that little bit of a space, which I don't know if you can see it on the dress because we are working on this bottom part of the dress and you have like this little gap here at the top and it's probably about a half an inch here. So that's what I think they're needing so you don't lose the point of your dress, I think is the whole uh, thing to that. This one here is a little bit close. That's a, probably a slight less than a quarter of an inch on the purple one. But um, these ones here are all a quarter of an inch. So I think that's what the angle is in it where it's slightly off on this is you, they want you to get that quarter inch there. So when you sew these together, you're not gonna lose the point of her dress. Which, and if you lose the point, I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world, but I know a lot of you out there, you know, I mean, we all want to do the best we can. So, um, if, if you find this difficult, maybe you could try it on a couple of scrap rectangles and see how you do. So, um, I'm going to kind of go with it and, um. I did good with the other ones, so I'm hoping that I do good with this. But the directions are very explanatory on how to place your, your fabrics and it's on page 14. So when you get your directions uh, printed off, you'll see all this. And like I said, do it in color so you can really kind of see see what you're doing. So all right, so we're gonna go back over here to the dookie and we're gonna um, sew this angle. And I probably should pin this, but this is a small piece and I'm not gonna pin it. So I'm just going to sew on my line and I'm going to try to keep my line right in there so I can stitch it on my line with those pins so I don't get poked. Okay. Okay, hopefully I did okay. I bring this forward, and yes, I do have that little bit on the edge for the dress. I have that quarter inch, so. And I'm gonna kind of put this up so you can see on the bottom. On the bottom here, my background fabric has to have that little bit of space right there. Cause when you join these together, you want that little bit of a quarter inch right there where my finger is to um, sew it together. So you won't lose the point of your dress. So, um, <laughs> the most difficult, you know, is really just these little triangles. They're, they're just a little tricky. I wouldn't say they're difficult. I mean, come on, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty explanatory so all right i am going to go over here and i'm going to whoa oh, technical difficulty edit <laughs> oh god the joys of filming okay we're gonna um we're just gonna cut this off at a uh, quarter of an inch Let's see, make sure I'm cutting the right side. So this is the side I want. So this, line that up on the line. And now we have the bottom of our dress. 
All right, back to the drawing board. So, um, we have those pieces. I'm gonna put a lot of the stuff to the side here. I'm just gonna kind of keep control of my camera here and we'll get to business on building our Tilda girls. So I'm gonna go back to the page where we put the girls together. And I am on this page here and I just kind of follow along on what to put together here. So I'm going to show you um, where to start. So our hair pieces. These are my hair pieces. And what I have here is some squares, rectangles, and some smaller squares. And I'm going to need three of these. And let's see, we need, we have three, one, two, three background squares. One, two, three, uh-oh, I think I messed up on cutting. C's, how many C's did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six something six two inch squares those aren't it c's are c's are two inch so they are not two inch they are one and a half right oh yes it can be two inch square for one and a half inch they are boots all the hair is cut the same All right, I gotta stop here. We're gonna have to edit. Okay, I got something to explain here because I have a little thing here that's not on the directions. So on the directions for the hair pieces, and I had to stop because I had to figure out how I did this because like I said, I hadn't worked on these in a while. So on the hair pieces, they're gonna finish at one and a half, and that is for the little pieces up here on the hair. As you can see, these are these little half square triangles in these little corners and the directions and I'm like what in the heck did I do you know so the C pieces on here they want you to cut two inches square and then you would have two inch background square and what they would want you to do is sew down the middle of them I think I'm not sure I like I said I didn't read the directions I mean I just know that they finish at one and a half so I'm going to show you how I did the hair pieces because I kind of forgot and I was cutting up background fabrics and I'm thinking oh my god where am I I'm lost so, like I said, getting back to these, I'm going to take it back down and I'm going to show you the, the hair pieces here. And um, I'm going to sew them together off camera and I'll show you um, the next step. But what I have got here is one and a half inch hair pieces. And I've had these already cut. Like I said, I've cut up all my hair pieces, hand pieces, dress pieces and everything. Boots and uh, hands and face and the chickens. So, the hair is, is next. And what I did was I took a background, or a background square 
in one and a half inches and then I cut my hair pieces for the little pigtails in one and a half. And what I have done is I have um, put them face to face or pretty to pretty and I made a little crease line down the middle. So what I have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down that crease line and then I'm going to cut the back part off and then I'm going to flip this part forward. And this is going to make my hair pieces and then I don't have all that little bit of waste of fabric and then having to cut them down and square them up and all of that. It just saves a little bit of time. So this is how I've done my, my girls. So I've got um, six, oh goodness gracious. There are six half square triangles and for some reason I have an extra one because I have the two pieces. This is for this, no, I'm right, I'm right because this is for the side of the face. So these two pieces here are for the side of the face. This is the top of the hair and then these little th uh, six small uh, one and a half inch squares here are for my pigtails. So I'm going to start off with the pigtails and like I said, I'm just going to put a one and a half inch background square face to face to each one of these little hair squares for the pigtails and I'm going, you can draw a line from corner to corner or you can just um, fold it over and make a press line like I did which this is my cheater way of doing things and I just sew down that press line or just just past that press line so that way it gives me a little give to fold that over so that they square up nicely because if you sew it directly in the line it might make it your your half square triangle come just shy of the edge is where it should be so if you want to sew just past this little fold line because you know that this bottom part is going to be the part that folds up so if you sew it just past that little fold line or right beside that fold line that will give you that extra you know space so that when your triangle folds over they'll square up nicely and you won't have to you know trim them up it just it's just a little time saver so I took some of my background fabric from the dress that I um, set to the side and like I said having a little extra fabric for mistakes or changes that you might want to want to make is good so mm -hmm. I got a bunch of these little squares. So I've got my my six hair pieces here and I'm gonna sew these off from camera and get these ready. And also, let's find the face, which I've got four more girls. So I've got all the face pieces cut, so I only need one of these. So, and I'm gonna show you how I sewed the face together, two with the hair pieces, and then I can just do these all at once. So you've got your square, um, your face piece here. This is letter G. And I'm going to take the F square. This would be on your hair square. And this is another one and a half inch square. And I am going to put it up into the left hand corner of the face. And I'm going to fold it up and I'm gonna make a little press line because this is gonna be the side of the, the hair on the side, on the left side of the face. And I'm going to sew that along that press line or right beside that press line so that that squares up nicely into that corner. And I could even use my iron to press that, you know, if need to. And then this other piece, this is a two and a half inch square. And you're, I'm just going to fold this one like a half square triangle and make me a little press line. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to sew this one on first. And then I'm going to add the two and a half because they're going to overlap just slightly. So that's how that's gonna go to make the face. So if you wanna go ahead and do those, sew those on, and then this rectangle piece will go on the very top of the head, and that will make the top of the hair on the head and the face. And then we will have a couple of small, let me see, size F, I think they're one, one inch, but let me check. They're one and a half inch squares, which I have some here. You're gonna do a lot of half square triangle and um, folding in this or drawing a line and these little background squares are going to go in the, at the top of your head on each side to give your your head shape so I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera so I don't have to bore you with you know sewing all my pieces on because I just really want you to see how it's done so there's a there's a lot of little angles and things in here that you have to do so um, when I get this all done I will 
lay it out and I will show you how it's gonna look, okay? So give me just a couple minutes. pieces sewed together and you can see how I did all these little one and a half inch squares here um you might want to take this back part off but I'm going to try to show you how these are going to lay together I also got the pieces to my face on here I sewed the little one on first and then I sewed the other square on the other side so they slightly overlap here um as you can see in the back here they, that your lines, your seam lines are going to cross in the back, so it just kind of gives a point to the part in her hair. And then the top of her hair, I sewed two background squares in either corner, so this will fit on the top of her head. And I love how the the design in the fabric, it all kind of lines up. It has like these little brown and gray leaves in there, and it just really gives her hair some kind of like texture. This really looks neat. So um, positioning these little half square triangles, this was always tricky for me and I'm gonna try to do this right. So when I think about this, and like I said, I haven't trimmed these back parts off, but you might wanna trim your, well, you want to trim your back parts off and you may want to press your seams open because these are small pieces and if you want it to lay more flat, you can um, cut these off and um, press your seams open. But I'm gonna show you how they go together. And the way that makes me think is the background fabric is gonna go toward the face. So this one is gonna kinda come here and you need a background piece up here at the top and it's one of these rectangles. So let me just grab one of them and that's gonna fill in right here. And I have a homemade design board here so you can kinda see how this is gonna go together. So there is a hair piece and then another hair piece with the background side up. And these aren't fitting together because they have to be sewed and you're going to have seam allowances but you want your background pieces going toward the hair and the background pieces going up and somehow i always confused this so the background for that one will go there there'll be another small one and a half inch square here and this helps you lay out your design so when you take it over to the sewing machine um you can um uh, Put it together very easily so here's another um b, b rectangle that will go there and the other pieces of the hair are going to be so you're going to have a b rectangle up the top here and then you're going to have your background up the next piece beside it background up and that's all i can think of is background up and then this one's going to be background up so the, all of the rectangles, the wide lines are facing this way and these wide lines are facing this way. So you want to follow your picture closely. And then we need a D square here for that one. So this section here you'll want to sew together and then this section and this section is all gonna fit to this section. So this one here is gonna be separate. And you'll see why later when we put the pieces together. So if you have a design wall, you can kind of put these up. So that is the start of the head. And you have this big square here. This is your four and a half by your four and a half. This is also going to go on to this section once it's sewed together. These will all fit together. And this will be one unit. And this one will be um, part of another unit um, when you get to that. So you can go ahead and sew these together. So I'm going to stop camera and I'm going to sew all these together and show you what we got. And I'll put it up on my design board and you'll see how the rest of it is really going to come together fairly easily. She is all sewed together. And um, so you can see that this one unit here fits together. I have the large four and a half inch rectangle all the pieces in the face and then this little piece here on the other side of her hair will be separate. Um, on mine, some of these when I sewed them together, if they get a little wonky, you can kind of square them up. I had to square up a couple of my pieces because sometimes fabric stretches. And I was doing the my original tiltas that I had started on another sewing machine on my Husqvarna Viking. And now I have a Juki, so seam allowances can get tend to get a little bit 
different than than other when you sew from one sewing machine to another so just keep that in mind so um, I squared my null up I also pressed the seams in these small triangles I pressed them open so that they would go together um, a little bit better and just you know and after I sewed them I squared them up so it it looks really nice so we're gonna get on to the dress part and I showed you how we did that that angle sewing for the dress so this I'm just gonna stick this right up let me look at my picture here this is gonna fit right here so you're gonna kind of see how this is gonna start coming together yeah. and then the bottom part of the dress will go here and this is our other little awkward um, rectangle where we sewed it at, a, at an angle and these pieces will get sewed together and let's see we have the sleeve now um, the sleeve is going to go up here at the top of the dress and I also have this little one inch one inch square and I've kind of creased it so it was a half square triangle and we're going to put that up in the corner like this I'm going to open it up sew along that diagonal line and then flip it back and that will give her shoulder an angle so I'm just going to leave that off there for right now and then I'm going to show you how the rest of some of this stuff goes together and then down here so this is all going to fit together and we're going to sew this then you have this little long piece uh triangle piece that um triangle rectangle <laughs> it's a rectangle that's going to match the dress and then you're going to have your short little hand piece so in these um light brown i, I just figure skin color is what i had for the face and one for the hand and i'd already cut them all up to have them ready and that's gonna sew together with that uh dress rank dress rectangle and then i have a rect or i have a square oh my gosh i have a square here and i folded it in half and i creased it and get it open and this is a one and a half inch square and this is going to fit at the bottom of the hand and i've already made a crease line so it looks like a half square triangle and I'm going to sew down that diagonal line and when I and then when I sew it and I flip it forward that's going to give you the shape of your hand hopefully you can kind of see that so I'm going to sew all these together actually that's going to stay there and then you have the rest of your dress this is another piece that will um fit along here so that will give you your sleeve your dress your hand and I will sew these together and then we will get on to making the chicken so I'm gonna sew these together and then um, we will get to the next step okay I have got these pieces sewed together of the dress um, I have to say I'm not sure if I'm exactly spot on with this piece that I showed you so you want to pay special attention to your directions because I'm a little bit off and I wish I had a little more seam allowances here. I'm afraid I might lose my point. And I think I got this piece backwards to this end. I'm not sure. I tried to take it apart and, and re-sew it together, but um, I'm just gonna go with what I got. So um, just wanna follow your directions. Uh, your arm and your hand pieces. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't let you watch me sew that because <laughs> I think I'm getting in a hurry because I'm getting closer to the end and I haven't made one of these in a while and every one of them it seems like I've sewed something together on the wrong side or whatever so I've sewed this part on the other side of the hand and I had to tear it out and I had to oh the face I forgot to put in the bottom corners of the face because I kept looking at it I'm like what did I miss so I've I had to do a little seam ripping surgery for her face and add these corners and so I had to lift up the hair piece and pull it away from this side that I'd already sewed it so I could add in these two bottom corners to give her face shape. And then of course I got the sleeve all, and this is all one row, and the dress is all one row, and I will sew those together. And I got the two long pieces. I added a little piece on the ends to make them the length they need to be, and the, the W here that goes under the hair, this is a two and a half inch wide piece and it is 22 and a half inches long and this one is a one and a half inch piece when this one needs to be 25 and a half inches long so those are your two outside pieces so i'm going to get down to the chicken and the boots so i have a piece of brown here for the boots and this is going to add on to this long piece here so 
you're kind of piecing this together in sections. And then I have a, um, this is a three inch, let me see what piece is this, this is O. This is a three inch, a three inch by five and a half. And this is going to go right along the boots here. And we're going to add a couple corner pieces. And I have the beak for the chicken. And when I open this up, I've already pressed it to make a seam line. But my beak is yellow, of course. And it is a one and a half inch square. And I've kind of folded it so I made like a half square triangle. So I have a crease line. And that is going to go at the top left of that corner there for the chicken. And then my boot toe is a two inch square. And I have also folded that in half for a press line. And it is gonna go into the bottom right hand corner, which hopefully you can see this, and it's gonna stay there for me. So you can kind of see how the boot comes and takes, takes shape. Okay, so the next two pieces, let's see. We have the K piece, which is a background. And that one is going to go over here. And then you have the chicken head. This is also a K piece. And this piece is three inches by two and a half. So actually, when you sew these together, you're going to have seam allowance. So I'm just kind of layering them together. So you've got the top part of your chicken. And you'll see that his beak is going to come right here. And let's see, we're going to have an M piece, which this, I believe, is a two and a half. And that is going to be sewed onto the corner of this. So when I open that up, you're going to sew it along the diagonal line. And of course, we're going to cut the back part off, and that will help shape the head. And then I have the body piece. And these are all going to fit together once they're sewed. I'm just going to kind of show you on the design wall so you have a general idea on how to put these together. So the chicken tail feather is going to go on this piece here and it's going to sew in the bottom corner. And I've got my piece, my square folded in half so I can sew it on that diagonal line. And then when I fold it over and I cut the back off, that's going to give me the tail shape. And then the bottom of the hen, I have two background squares, which I haven't pressed these yet. And let me just press these together. These, I believe, are two inch squares. And I'm just gonna press them to give them a press line. And you will see how this tilde girl is gonna come together. So these little um, squares are gonna be, you know, I made the crease line, so I folded them in half, like a half square triangle. And they're gonna go in the bottom right and left hand corners of the chicken to give the chicken shape. So um, now it's just like, it's it's absolutely like a puzzle. Um, you're just taking your pieces and you're piecing them together just like on the directions. And I said I don't follow directions very well, but um, after a little bit of seam ripping and you know, just playing, this is really fun for me. So I don't take it too serious, but I really want it to look nice. So I give you the general idea of how to sew this together. So I'm going to finish this, this girl up and I'm going to sew her together and I'll show you the finished product. Um, but stay tuned for part two um, when I get the rest of my Tilda girls done. So this makes three more after this one that I've got to do. And then I'm going to start on my hen houses and I'll probably get the pieces put up with that and I will try to get a video put together for that so you can kind of see how this cute little quilt is going to come together. So if you um, print off the directions, good luck and maybe you might want to follow directions and don't follow my direction because <laughs> you know, um, I just like to do things my own way and I'm sure we all do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this sewed together and show you how it looks and maybe get the other girls so I can kind of fit her in with the other girls, but they're all individual and they're really cool. So stay tuned. All right, guys, there she is. She is my six finished Tilda. Um, I just wanted to let you know that these blocks um, are finishing out at 12 and a half by 25 and a half. I probably will, I don't think I've squared any of these up yet, so I'll probably square them up and everything, but um, I have got th three more to go, six, yeah, there's nine, there's nine girls. I have three more to go, so on my next video of the Tilda, um, Tilda's World, um, my Tilda's World, 
um, I will show you how I do the chicken house and you know what I choose for it so I hope you enjoyed this little um, version of my Tilda's world and what I did and how I put it together um, like I said get your copy go to tildosworld.com and you can uh, print off the pattern and put your own creativity or spin on it so stay tuned to my channel for more good things to come and please like and subscribe and I will see you next time have a great night bye